Hello, so today we're going to do something a little different. We're not going to uh, have a script, uh, just a little bit of a retrospective. What we're looking at is the first ever Linux distribution I ever installed. This is a Linux Mandrake, Mandrake Linux 7.2. And I installed this back around 2000, maybe 2001. And I had bought the box set. Um, and you might be asking, why would I buy a box set of the operating system, which is free? Uh, but you have to understand that the time I was on 56k and to download this distribution would have taken an entire weekend and that would have been charged per minute. So it probably worked out cheaper in the end to actually um, buy the box set. Uh, so this is Mandrake Linux 7.2. It's based on the Linux 2.2 kernel. And uh, we're just going to log in um, to KDE. Uh, that was my preferred uh, desktop environment for the time. Uh, so this is uh, Mandrake Linux 7.2, uh, this is KDE, uh, it might look a little bit archaic now but uh, rest assured for its time uh, this was pretty cutting edge as far as uh, Linux went. Uh, Mandrake Linux was I suppose the um, Ubuntu of its time in terms of being user friendly. Uh, a lot of people at the time would have used Mandrake to be, uh, you know, get, get used to Linux, install it, have a pretty... Uh, straightforward installation process and it came with a, a lot of uh, software packages as well so you can see here it's got quite a an extensive array of um, software installed um, so we'll just have a look at the terminal we're probably gonna have to get this online first um, okay so we need to su to root first because we can't use the if config as user um, so you can see there's no interfaces uh, enabled right now. Uh, so first thing we we'll want to do is actually, because during the installation process, it did not detect the uh, network card. This is a uh, true virtual box. Hasn't detected uh, virtual boxes network card, which is a uh, PC net one. Um, so we're gonna have to load the kernel module for that. So we will change directory to modules and it's 2.2 kernel. And it should be network interfaces. And it's PCNet something. Okay, so PCNet32. So we're just going to load this. This is just loading the uh, network card uh, module. And then we'll set the status to up for at zero. Um, Okay, so let's have a look at ifconfig now, and you can see that the e, um, at zero uh, interface is enabled, but it doesn't have any details, so it's got no IP address, no netmask, stuff like that, that we will need to get us online. So we're gonna set that up right now. Um, so we'll give it an IP address of 192.168.0.20. Set up the netmask, and give it a broadcast address. And I do apologize uh, how loud my keyboard is. Um, I'm aware of that. Uh, so we'll check out the route. So there's no default gateway setup. So if we tried to ping Google, for example, it's not going to work. It's just going to give us an unknown host because it doesn't know uh, the route to get to Google. So we're going to do that now. Root add default gateway. And we'll just set that to the router. So if we ping Google now, uh, we should be able to get a response. So there we go. Perfect. So uh, that's pretty much the directory structure. And as I said, it's on the uh, Linux 2.2 kernel. And uh, one of the first administrative tasks that I did uh, when I installed Mandrake 7.2 back in the day was uh, I upgraded it to the uh, 2.4 kernel after a few weeks. Um, so although it was a user-friendly distribution for its time, there was still, there was always something you had to get your hands dirty with. So for example, I had a Win modem, which was uh, partially like software emulated and it didn't work natively with uh, Linux. So I had to get drivers. And I think that took me the best part of almost a week to get, get to find those and get it online. So there was always something you had to do. It wasn't as plug and play as uh, Linux is today. Uh, you have to understand this is almost 20 years old now. Probably is coming up to 20 years. Uh, so, 
Hat release. So you can see here, it's got the uh, Red Hat release um, in the Etsy folder. And from this, you can tell this is actually a fork of the uh, Red Hat distribution. So Mandrake was based on Red Hat. I can't remember what version, I think it was version five point something. Uh, although don't quote me on that. Uh, so you can see here, Linux Mandrake 7.2. Now back in the day, I ran this on an AMD K6 II uh, processor running at 450 megahertz. It wasn't super quick for its time, but uh, it served its purpose. It served its purpose and uh, Mandrake ran on it pretty well. Although um, environments like KDE and GNOME were a little bit resource heavy, so I ended up switching to uh, Fluxbox at some points. But uh, out of the two between KDE and GNOME, I definitely preferred uh, KDE. Uh, so we'll have a look at some stuff, I suppose, here. Um, let me just minimize this for a moment. Uh, so we'll take a look at the uh, Netscape um, web browser. So you can tell how old an operating system by whether or not it has Netscape installed. Uh, so this is the uh, Netscape um, communicator uh, web browser, uh, 4.5. So the year 2000, this particular version came out. Uh, there's not gonna be many websites that are actually gonna work on this because it's so old and it doesn't support uh, modern implements of HTTPS and uh, you know CSS and stuff like that. So uh, Google will probably load, sort of. And uh, let me try to search for Mandrake Linux. It kind of loads, it's a little bit kind of uh, jumbled together. But if you try clicking on any of these websites, uh, they won't be able to uh, connect. Uh, one website I do know that hasn't changed over this time is the uh, Slackware Linux website. This has pretty much remained the same since the uh, late 90s. Uh, so you go to Slackware, you can see, and I did upgrade from Mandrake uh, to Slackware eventually after a few months, once I got this internet service that didn't charge me per minute. I downloaded Slackware 8.0 and I still have that disk uh, along with uh, my um, box set of, um, well, the disks at least uh, from my box set for Mandrake 7.2. Uh, so they're up to 14.2 now, that's nice. I haven't used Slackware in a very long time. I switched from Slackware to Debian around 2006. So that's the last time I've used it. So um, I'll probably give it an install at some point just to uh, toy around and see how far it's come. Uh, so this is Netscape, it's uh, pretty archaic and I suppose to really get, to make this operating system um, usable for uh, modern day, I'd probably, I'd, I'd have to upgrade the kernel, um, install some upgrades and a newer web browser, maybe an older version of Firefox that's well, it's still old, it's still, you know, we'll, we'll load modern websites like YouTube and stuff like that. So that is Netscape. I do also have uh, Mozilla installed. It's not Mozilla Firefox now. It's uh, just an old version of the Mozilla web browser. And this uh, is pretty unstable. It tends to crash a lot, but it, it does load Google a lot better here than um, Netscape did. Uh, so we'll search for Mandrake. And the last time I did this, it crashed. Okay, so it crashed again. So um, not very stable. Uh, so because this is a Red Hat based um, distribution, it has the Red Hat package manager, as you can see RPM there, if you want to install um, packages, it's pretty straightforward. So you don't have to uh, compile your software. There was a uh, pre-made um, packages. And there is also a GUI um, interface for installing packages called RPM Drake. So you can see here, you've got a list of different uh, software you can install. Um, a lot of those were on the uh, bonus uh, CD and the box set. Uh, so it did actually come with quite an extens extensive uh, software library. So there's a lot of that, you know, you can configure the operating system from the terminal and that's what most people did. But there's also, um, you know, a graphical um, base configuration tools like this. You've got Drake config. Uh, so you can set up your, you know, your, uh, your graphics card, stuff like that. Um, what services you want to start, configure your hardware, stuff like that, which made it uh, a lot easier for uh, a newcomer to Linux to um, get your system up and running as, as you'd like. Um, so that is KDE. Uh, let's see what we got here. Some arcade games, board games. 
card games. Oh, have a look here, a potato guy. That's pretty cool. We'll give him some eyeballs and a nose. Does he want eyebrows? Well, he's gonna get eyebrows. And we'll give him a mouth. Oh yeah, looking good, sir. Looking good. Uh, so um, there's quite some games. Um, what else we got here? IRC, so uh, not as many people go on IRC anymore, but uh, back in the day, uh, if you wanted to find out anything, uh, IRC was the place to go. So it's got a, an old version of XChat and um, Uh, we'll try the uh, 2600 channel. This is where I used to hang out mostly. I think it's .com or is it .net? I can't remember. Yeah, there we go. So that's connecting. It'll probably take some time. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, there are things you can do in this operating system. There's a compiler. Um, so you got GCC installs if you want to, uh, you know, um, code something so we'll code something quickly just to show you so uh blah i think i've already got a blah in there so we wait now uh okay um apologies uh so if you're not familiar with vi um it's a text editor and it's a pretty powerful text editor but it's not very user friendly uh, so we need to go into insert mode. Um, Do.h. We'll just do something really quickly. Int main. We'll just do a printf statement. Printf. Hello world. And then escape. Right quit. We'll just compile this now. So you can see, boom, that works. Uh, so it's got a lot of uh, basic dev tools you want to get you know, up and running with programming. And uh, Back then I did do uh, quite a bit of C programming, uh, although I haven't coded in C in quite some time. Um, so I learned how to code on Mandrake Linux. Uh, so we'll have a look at the other uh, desktop environments. Um, I'm just going to log out of KDE here. So the box that did kill them were quite a few uh, desktop environments. Came at GNOME, uh, Enlightenment, Window Maker, Blackbox. Um, we'll take a look at Blackbox since that is what I tended to use. Well, I used Fluxbox, which was uh, based on Bla Blackbox. They were pretty similar, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, so you can see it's really lightweight, and that's why I ran it, um, Fluxbox, that is, um, because uh, my processor for the time, it wasn't super quick, and running stuff like KDE and GNOME, which are just a little bit, not super sluggish, but just a little bit sluggish, so I ended up moving to uh, to um, to Fluxbox. So you can see you've got all your software there, you got your terminals. Um, pretty straightforward, there's not much to it. Have a look at some others. Um, take a look at Window Maker. So this is Window Maker. I wasn't a big fan of this, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, it just didn't really appeal to me. Uh, these little sidebars were quite common back in the uh, late '90s and early 2000s. Um, I used to have one for Fluxbox, and I can't remember the name of it. So it's so long ago now, but uh. It showed like system information, like uh, CPU load, you know, the users, uh, RAM usage, stuff like that. Um, so this is, exit out of here. We will take a look at Enlightenment. So this is Enlightenment, and I wasn't a big fan of this either. If I'm gonna be honest, it was just, I don't know, it just, it didn't really appeal to me. And we used to use the middle mouse button to uh, navigate the uh, menu. So we'll log out, that's Enlightenment. And finally, we look at GNOME. Uh, so you can see how far GNOME has come. 
I'm not a fan of modern implements in GNOME, uh, GNOME 3, but I do like uh, uh, GNOME 2, uh, later versions of GNOME 2 and its derivatives like Mate. Um, so we'll have a look at GNOME. So you can see here GNOME is pretty, uh, it kind of resembles Windows 95 a little bit. Um, and there are some themes you can get for it to spice it up and make it look a little bit better, you know. Um, but I just, I wasn't a fan of GNOME. And I also found it to be quite clunky. Um, out of between uh, KDE and GNOME, I just, for whatever reason, GNOME used to run a little bit slower. Um, so you got your games there. Same stuff. They pretty much, you have shared libraries between uh, GNOME and KDE. So um, most of the software ran on both of them. Um, so you got Netscape. There's a Conqueror web browser as well. And I think it, it had links as well on it. I don't know if this is going to work. Except. That's probably going to take some. We'll leave that off. Uh, so that's GNOME. Um, I think it's GNOME 1.2. Um, there you got your different workspaces. Oh, here you got your themes. I've got no teams installed. Screen savers. Screen savers were a big thing back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, yeah, that one's pretty cool, actually. So uh, this is a uh, Mandrake Linux 7.2, and it's it's uh, you know it's kind of uh, stirring up some nostalgia in me. It's been some time uh, since I've looked at this. And uh, it does bring back some very good memories. It's almost 20 years ago now. It's hard to believe how fast time has uh, flown. Um, but that's it. Mandrake Linux 7.2.